Is he a good, good father? Is he a good, good father? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, we exalt you. We love you. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is a moment that we, we don't pause, but we follow the leading of the Holy Spirit to pray for those that are experiencing infirmities, sickness, and disease. You might be out there, and you're one of those individuals tonight. We want to join and, and hook our faith up with you and call you healed. In Jesus' name, because himself took our infirmities. He bore our sicknesses and carried our diseases. And by his stripes, we're healed. And we stand on the authority of that, no matter what our bodies are telling us, no matter what the circumstances are saying, no matter what symptoms we may be manifesting. He took our infirmities, bore our sicknesses, and carried our diseases. And by his stripes, we are healed. We're going to pray with uh, Alonzo Williams. Praise God. Hallelujah. And early. He had a fall, uh, sort of blacked out. Thank you, Jesus. We're praying that they're finding out what's going on. There's no stroke, praise God, no permanent damage or, or anything. We're so glad Mary is with us tonight. She's been battling. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for her being here tonight. So join your forces with me tonight, your voices, if you will. Let's pray for Alonzo in Jesus' name. God, we thank you for Alonzo. We thank you for the healing that's flowing through his body now. From the crown of his head down to the soles of his feet, healing belongs to us. It's ours. It's the children's bread. We're children of the Most High God. These signs shall follow them that believe they will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Hallelujah. And he healed them with his word. And so, Father, we send a word now to Alonzo. Praise God. Alonzo, be made whole. Rise up from the bed of affliction and be made whole in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hey, let's thank God for divine healing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lady friends going to come now and pray to prepare our minds to receive what God wants to say to us. Amen? Say amen for her as she comes. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you for another time that we can sit at the feet of Jesus, Jesus. and hear what he has to say to us. God, we know that you have already worded the mouth of the grace gift. Mm -hmm. He's been in your presence and you've been talking to him because we've been talking to you. And now we thank you, Father God, for revealing the secrets of your word to us, your laws, Father God, your covenant that you made with us. God, give us an understanding more Ooh. and more every day. Allow us to understand and realize, Father God, that with you, we are win. We never oh. lose. And we're always to Thank push back Jesus. when the enemy Woo. pushes against us. Hallelujah. God, we take authority over all of the power of the enemy tonight and every hindrance that would try to interfere with us receiving what you have prepared oh. for us. God, we're sitting at the table ready to eat what you prepare for us and it will energize us. It will empower us. It will anoint us the more to destroy yokes and remove burdens in our lives. Well, get your Bibles in your hand. We're going to make this bold profession over the Word of God. Amen? Are you ready to be poured into? Are you ready to be poured into? Come on, say this with me. This is my Bible. I am what it says that I am. I can do what it says that I can do. It is the definer of my design, the presenter of my purpose, and the director of my destiny. It is the source of the creative faith that is necessary for me to accomplish the success I have been ordained to realize. It is the voice of God speaking to my spirit, commanding my soul, and controlling my body for a kingdom lifestyle and world dominion. It turns the problems of my life into doors of opportunity where increase, advancement, and success waits for me on the other side. 
Well, I will make it my highest priority to be present and on time when the Lord has summoned me to come and hear my grace gift present character transforming truths that challenge me to rise to excellence, deny mediocrity, and embrace the changes that guarantee my prosperity through faith because I know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Lord, you have heard the tenor of the words encased in this profession once again, corporately. And I believe, sir, that you're going to address us on the basis of what we corporately profess. You will show us what we need to see about your person, your presence, your power, your kingdom, and our purpose in it. You're going to reveal to us this evening what is relevant. Teach us what's true. Seal it with simplicity. Help me say it successfully. And bring security to every believer that will hear and obey it because the Spirit of the Lord God Almighty is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal broken hearts, yeah. preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. As we're seated in his presence, let's get ready to dig in. Amen? amen. Hallelujah. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. If you're viewing with us for the first time this evening, we're talking about developing kingdom disciples by the master's program. Say developing, developing. kingdom disciples kingdom by, the by the master's program. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we're taking our cues from Jesus. He's given us permission to study Matthew's notes. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so we started right at the beginning of the New Testament, just jumped right in to the first student we saw, and his name is Matthew. Amen? Amen. So warning, what you're about to hear will be hazardous to your carnality. The eternal high council has determined that continued exposure to these kingdom truths will create in you a kingdom nature and destroy the self-life. Amen? Amen? All right, we're in Matthew chapter 6, and we're about ready to wrap up chapter 6. We're on verse number 34. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and, and Jesus just says once again here, as this chapter is concluding. Oh, I'm sorry. We got to go. We got to go to uh, verse 33 because we didn't finish that. The, the, the final statement in there, and you'll see, was pretty powerful and profound. And we're going to look at some passages of scripture that will give support to that or credence to that. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Say, as a disciple, as a disciple it, is it is my quest to seek first, to seek first the, kingdom the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And his right. Now, as I'm doing that, he made me a promise. He made me a promise. If you seek me first, my kingdom, his righteousness, all these things will be added unto you. Amen. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. I, 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 I revel in it every time I, I think about it. Now, I'm not doing that to get all these things added. Amen. They're going to be added because I'm doing it. Amen. How many of you know you shouldn't pay people to do what they ought to do? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you own your house and you cut in the grass, we shouldn't pay you. That's your grass. Amen. Pay you to wash your car? <laughs> Vacuum your carpet. That's yours. Amen. That's something you ought to do because it's yours. Amen. 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 And so I am a citizen of the kingdom of God. I'm a disciple, and there's some things that are required. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Seek him first and his righteousness. That's required. Now, so here's what he's going to do because he loves me and because I'm so committed to pleasing him, all these things that I need, he going to give to me. Amen. Wow. Hallelujah. And, and like we have with all the other passages, as we've examined these words from Matthew as Jesus was doing the teaching, let's go to another passage of Scripture to see if we can't see uh, them evidenced. In Leviticus chapter 25. Say Leviticus chapter 25. <laughs> Video Center, help me out. Leviticus 25. We're going to look at verse 20 and verse 21. Say verse 20. In verse 21, is there, is there a precedent here? Is Jesus creating a precedent by, a precedent by, give, precedents by giving us something that uh, is, is beyond the scope of what ought to be 
and is required? Am I special because he's saying that to me? Am I a special person? Am I endowed with a, a specific specialty? Is he singling me out? Lonnie, you're such a good guy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Or is this open to every believer? Every believer. In Leviticus chapter uh, 25, verse 20 and verse 21, you have that video center? Leviticus 25, verse 20 and 21. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, video center, let me give you a clue. When I give you the verse and I keep talking, that's uh, enough time for you to find it. <laughs> Praise God. So when I turn to the screen, it ought to be there. Glory to God. I, I love y'all. Don't look at me with that tone of voice. Praise God. I'm trying to respect your time. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. And if you shall say, what shall we eat the seventh year? Behold, we shall not sow nor gather in our increase. Amen. Verse 21. Then I will command my blessing. Then what? Let's go back to verse 20. This is an interesting statement. If you shall say, what shall we eat the seventh year? Behold, we shall not sow, nor gather in our increase. Now, what does he mean, what shall we say about the seventh year? Because he's given some instruction, this is a Sabbath year. It's like the Sabbath day. No labor on the Sabbath day. No labor in the Sabbath year. Are you with me? You don't plant. You don't work, you don't do anything. This is the Sabbath day. The, the weekly Sabbath starts Friday, sunset, uh, and ends Saturday, sunset. Are y'all with me? And so during that time period, God made a covenant with his people that this would be an indication to all who see you that you're in covenant with me because you were recognized this day. Amen. Amen. Amen? Now there are those that teach us that if we don't do that, then we're out of step with God. We're in violation of the covenant, and therefore we forfeit our, our opportunity to live with God forever. I would draw your attention to the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. Let's, let's go over there. Let's go over there. Hallelujah. Some of us have, have family members that are connected to uh, that level of teaching, and, and some of us have uh, close friends and and people that are connected to that level of teaching. And, and so it's just important that we, to the best of our ability, uh, share the truth of God as accurately as we can. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What chapter did I say? Uh, no, that's not it. It's chapter 4, I believe it is. I'm so glad you're with me. Yeah, yes, yeah, chapter 4. Well, how much of this do I want to share with you? Okay. It's, it's, hang with me. Hang with me. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. You with me? Let us, let us do what? Fear. Verse 1. Let us therefore what? Fear. fear. Let us therefore what? Is he asking us to get in fear, to be afraid, to be boo? No, because he said he's not giving us a spirit of fear. So what's he saying here? Let us consider God in great reverence and awe. Amen. Amen? Let us remember him this way to, to honor him, to, to hallow him. Amen? Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. If I'm, not if I'm not revering God, if I'm not giving God great reverence, if I'm not in awe of him, I may not do some of the things that I need to do to, to, uh, to embrace that rest. Amen? Amen? I'm not going to consider him. I'm not honoring him. And so I may not pay attention like I need to to get into that rest. Are y'all with me? Yeah. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them did not profit them, not being mixed with what? Come on, there are more of you here than that. Are you reading with me? Don't make me pause. You'll make me stay here and I'll keep you too long. <laughs> for we which have believed, uh, excuse me, for unto us was the gospel preached 
as well as unto them. But the word preach did not profit them, not being mixed with faith. faith. Say they had, they had no profit, no profit. From, what they from what they heard because, because they didn't mix it, didn't mix it with, faith. with faith. Okay? For, for we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said. Say we that believe. Are not like those who heard. We believe and we enter into rest. We enter into rest. What is rest? If you look at words in a different light, it's resisting every stimulation to work. Now, we might call that guy lazy in the natural. In the kingdom, we call him resting. I don't try to work what God said. I say it and I believe it and he works it. Amen. I'm resting. Amen. I'm resting. I'm resting in the fact that I'm healed. Amen. Even if my body is telling me I ain't. I'm resting because his word said it. I believe it. I can rest in it. Amen. I can have peace about it. Even if I don't feel peaceful. Even if my body is aching. I am at rest because I believe. Say, I'm at rest because I believe. Come on, y'all work with me. Jesus is teaching the disciples how to really embrace the Sabbath. Amen. For the disciple, the kingdom disciple, it ain't a day, it's a disposition. Yes. Amen. Thank you, lady friend. She believes it. Amen. I wonder if it's because we're going to ride home together. <laughs> she believes it because it's print, printed and it's written. Hallelujah. All right, come on. So, for we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Mm. That's, that's an interesting statement. I wish I had time to really teach this, but I got to get back to Matthew. I got So, y'all, y'all, just look up at me. Say amen. Okay, praise God. <laughs> For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. He spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, which is what Jesus is referring to here. Uh, Matthew is referring to Jesus in Matthew's uh, statement, his notes on kingdom discipleship. Listen to this. This is powerful. In a, Satan day, in a certain day, praise God, and... and uh, for he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. God did what? Rest. God did what? Rest. Hey, look up here at me, y'all. God did what? Rest. He rested when? On the, on the seventh day. He rested when? On the seventh day. From all his works. From what? All his works. From what? So those of us that are asking God to do something are out of order. He's already done. Can you believe it's done? Can you believe it's done? Can you believe receive what was done that he don't have to do it? It's done. He's resting. I said he's resting. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, if they what? Enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of what? They didn't enter in because of what? And they couldn't rest because they didn't have any faith. You're a good class tonight. Praise God. They didn't have any faith. They couldn't enter in. They couldn't receive it because they were in unbelief. What didn't they have faith in and what didn't they believe? That God had done everything. That it was already done. They couldn't believe it, so they violated the Sabbath. The Sabbath was a type and shadow of Christ to come, not a day that we have to hold in our performance or we ain't going to get to heaven. That's works in salvation, not faith. So since they didn't believe when Saturday came and they were not supposed to do any work, what did they do? They went out there and gathered sticks. On Saturday, because they didn't believe that God would provide. Ooh, this is so much easier than y'all making it. 
I'm trying to get back to Matthew with somebody just whisper an amen to me. Praise God. <laughs> is it Wednesday, Peachy? Is that what it is? Hump day. <laughs> See, <laughs> seeing there remaineth, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein and they to whom it was first preached entered not because of unbelief. Again, he limited a certain day saying in David, Today, after, a so, after so long a time, as he said, today, if you will hear his voice, today, if you will hear his voice, what if that day is on Sunday? What if it's Monday? Do you have to wait till Saturday to hear this? Today, if you will hear his voice, you can enter into rest. Amen. Today, if you hear it. Tomorrow, if you hear it. Next week, if you hear it, whenever you hear it, rest. Thank you for that clap. Where's my clap button? <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all working a brother real hard tonight. Again, he limited a certain day, saying in David today, after so long a time, as it is, as it, as it is said, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your what? Harden not your out of the abundance of the, the mouth. So how do I know when my heart is hard? By what's coming out of my mouth. For if Jesus had given them rest, this is really not Messiah here. This is really the Greek word Joshua. If Joshua had given them rest, they would not have afterward have spoken of another day. Because we know Jesus gave them rest. Come on, we know Jesus gave them rest. Yes. There remaineth therefore what? A rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works as God did from his. Glory. Oh, y'all are hearing me. If you say, if, when, I when I enter into my rest. Into my rest. Now look up in for a minute. My rest is believing he has done everything, and he's resting. Amen. Yes. So if I can enter into my rest, if I can believe, I can enter into my rest the same way God is resting today. Yes. Woo. It's settled. Yes. It's settled. Yes. I'm above, not beneath. I'm the head, not the tail. I'm blessed going out, and I'm blessed coming in. I'm resting in that. I am arrest. I have arrested every anxious moment with that. I'm resting. I walk by faith and not by glory to God. Y'all got that? Hallelujah. All right, so verse 11. Let us therefore what? Labor. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Thank you for that one all right back there. Praise God. Are y'all hearing me? Say, I'm not falling, I'm not falling. In, unbelief. in unbelief. I'm resting. I'm resting. I, am resting. I, am resting. I am resting. I am a king disciple. I'm a kingdom disciple. Come on. And I'm resting. I am resting. Woo, hallelujah. Glory to God. That was a long time to get this. And we got to go back to Leviticus after that long introduction about Leviticus, which took about 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just with all your help and enthusiasm, it made me go down there longer than I needed to be. Praise God. Y'all are blessing to me. Praise God. All right, let's bring that Leviticus back up so we can get out of chapter 6. And if, if ye shall say, what shall we eat? The seventh year. Say, if I say that, I'm not in rest. I'm in unbelief. Because I don't trust his word. Praise God. Behold, we shall not sow nor gather in, the, in our increase. Verse 21. Then I will command my blessing upon you in the sixth year and bring it forth fruit for three years. You ain't hearing me. He said, look, if you challenge me 
you'll see that I can exceed your expectation. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we dare ask or think. If you get to tripping about the seventh day, seventh year, obey me and watch your increase stay for three years. Very few of us are living in a three-year increase abundance, but you can. Amen. Say, I am. I am. It's, mine. it's mine. It's a part of the rest. Of the rest. Woo, so forget the stress. Forget the stress. I'm going to embrace the rest. Psalms 34. Psalms 34. Is this helping you at all? Yes. Psalms 34, verse number 10. When I looked at this, this, was, this, this really commanded our, our, our thinking here and, and, and our, excuse me, our attention. How many of y'all love the word? Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the word is the doorway to the rest. Amen. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen? Amen? So Psalms 34, Psalms 34, verse number 10. Hallelujah. Young lions, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall what? Not want for any good things. Young lions do lack and suffer hunger. I, I'm, I'm a nature guy. I used to like those uh, nature movies, man. Praise God. Uh, I ordered some. I recorded some. And Johnny got some. I got his and looked at them. And did I give them all back to you, Johnny? I think I did. I think I did. I don't know. Praise God. Anyway, anyway, anyway. If I didn't, charge my head, not my heart. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, I used to look at those things, man. I, the, the, the lions on the Serengeti plain, that, that one lion that would go out. Can I tell you something, brothers, and y'all get offended? It was the females that went out and drove the prey to the male. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Shirley. <laughs> so the females would get out, and they would be in a pack, and they would give such a roar that it would stir the prey up, the wildebeest, the water buffalo, whatever, and they would just take off and run. Now, occasionally, the female could catch one of them and take it out. Are you with me? Right. They want to feed their young. But, but sometimes, when they couldn't catch them, they drove it right to that big old headed lion. And he was waiting in the underbrush. And when they came, yeah, supper time. Are y'all with me? And they would feed the young. Of course, after the strong ate, the young would come in and get the scraps. Amen? Amen. But the, 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 the father lion kept the hyenas off. And the other uh, scavengers. Yeah, I want to call them something else, but that's what they were. Praise God. Freeloaders. <laughs> We got freeloaders in our society. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Okay. So let, let, let's go. Let's go back to Matthew now, chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse 34. So here's what he's saying. Now, if you caught all that, you caught all that, entering into the rest, the Sabbath and all that, if, if, if you caught it, do you really understand that? This, he's talking to the di disciples. He wants them to really understand this because he's getting ready to make a statement. If you really understood this, Listen to me, take no thought for tomorrow. If you really believe what I'm telling you, take therefore no thought for tomorrow. For, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Now we got to look at James chapter 4 verse 13. James chapter 4 verse 13. Did you get that? He said, listen to me. Hey, guys, let me, look, look at me for a minute. If you got that, quit worrying about tomorrow. Amen. Quit getting all in an uproar about what's going to happen tomorrow. Amen. I'm going to take care of you. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Are you with me? Uh, uh, James chapter 4, verse 13. Video saying you got that for me. Is this helping y'all? James chapter, see the disciples had to get this lesson. They're going to be walking with Jesus. Sometime they're going to be all day and they're going to be hungry. 
How many of you have worked on a job and, and just longed for the lunch break? Yeah, had a hard taskmaster. Want, want you to work through your lunch break. Several days now. Hey, hey, bring me my committee man. We need a meeting. <laughs> Are y'all with me? So Jesus is saying, disciples, there, there's going to come a time where you have to trust me. You're going to trust me. It's going to look like you ain't going to get fed. It's going to look like you working for nothing. But I need, you to, I need you to hang in there. Hang with me. Hang with me. Don't be thinking about lunch. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go to now, ye that say, today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue therein a year and buy and sell and get gain. Verse 14. Whereas you know not what shall be on tomorrow. For what is your life? <laughs> even, excuse me, it is even a vapor that appeared for a little time and then vanished away. Verse 15. For that you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. Verse 16. But now you rejoice in your boasting. All such rejoicing is evil. Verse 17. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Sin is missing the mark. Don't be bragging about your stuff. Like somehow it's your longevity. Are y'all with me? Those of us who had stock and we trusted what was happening in the stock market, we woke up one day and the market failed. And some of us lost quite a bit. Those of us that did have nothing in there, we didn't feel the pain of those that did. Are y'all with me? He said, look, now don't be bragging about what you can accomplish. Let's, don't get it twisted. Everything you got, I gave to you. Everything. Now you had the good sense to put it in some place to make it grow. But when I'm my breathing, breathing on the growth market, you see what happens when it's just in your hands. The economy goes belly up, and then you sit and with a long face for three days trying to recoup your loss. Three days ago, you were rejoicing in what your stock did. Take no stock in your stock. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Now, he ain't saying don't have no savings. He didn't say don't invest. Are you with me? A wise man saves and invests. Make friends to yourself of unrighteous men. Understand how that system works. Take advantage of it. Don't let it take advantage of you. Woe well, unto them that they put their trust in uncertain riches. Get to bragging about what, you, what you're able to accomplish. And then you don't wake up that morning. And somebody else is living the life <laughs> by everything you invest. I wonder sometimes if the people could see, I don't think they can, looking back at somebody go through your life investment in a year. Is anybody hearing me at all? When you had every opportunity to sow into a kingdom project, to advance the kingdom, and you wouldn't, because you kept thinking about tomorrow. Amen. Thank you for that mm, way back there. <laughs> the rest of y'all I'm praying for you. It's your faithful selves. <laughs> Jesus is Lord. Amen. Okay, okay. Let's, let's go on to chapter 7 because I've been, really been wanting to get here. I got about 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Judge not. This, this paragraph is very interesting. Listen to the topic of this paragraph. Understand what critical judging is and why it is forbidden in the kingdom. Say critical judging, critical judging. is forbidden, forbidden in the kingdom. 
So there are some things that we should get from this paragraph. The problem of criticism, the pressure of comeback, pretended concerns, personal censorship, and, uh, and precious commodities. Say precious commodities. And I don't know if we're going to cover all that, but you know, we've just been taking our time, right? Matthew chapter 7, verse 1, judge not that you be not judged. Mm. I was looking at this, and uh, there's a sister to this verse over in Luke chapter 6, verse 37. Video center, would you bring that up? Luke chapter 6, verse 37. Are you getting anything out of this? I got to keep asking you. I, I, I know you didn't lie on the last one, but this is a new question. Are you getting anything out of this? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. Luke chapter 6, verse 37. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. Now, this, this reminded me of a story that David got himself into way over there in the Old Testament. Let's go over there and look at this. It was in 2 Samuel chapter 24. 2 Samuel chapter 24. David got into a predicament. He just dis, dis really trusted himself. He was, the, he was a, uh, guilty of James, what we just read. He didn't understand sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So he thought that he would do something to shore his tomorrow up. Are you with me? Now, there was nothing essentially wrong with what David did except his reason for doing it because God told him later on, number Israel, count them. But David took it upon himself to do this without God's prompting, so his confidence was in the number that he had, not in the God who gave him the numbers. Are you with me? All right, numbers, I'm sorry, uh, 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse number 10. Let's look at this. Praise God. Video Center, you're wonderful. I know, I know what they're doing. They're caught up in this word. I'm the teaching. They're going, wow, this is great, great, great. Oh, what did he say? No, so, praise God. And David's heart smote him after he had numbered the people. And David said unto the Lord, I have sinned greatly and that I have done. And now I beseech thee, O Lord, take away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. Verse 11. I like that about David. He acknowledged his mess. For when David was up in the morning, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet Gad, David's seer, saying, you know, God, God got a seer watching you, <laughs> praise God. Verse 12. Go and say unto David, thus saith the Lord, I offer thee three things. Choose thee one of them that I may do it unto thee. Verse 13. So Gad came to David and told him and said unto him, Shall seven years of famine come unto thee in the land? Or wilt thou flee three months from before thine enemies while they pursue thee? Or that there be three days pestilence in the land? Now advise me and see what, I shall, what, what answer I shall return to him that sent me. Verse 14. And David said unto Gad, I am in a great strait. How many of y'all know that that is just a pickle in a hard place, right? How many of you want any one of them? None of them. Praise God. What's, what's, what's opportunity number four? Praise God. David said unto Gad, I am in a great strait. Let us fall now into the hand of who? The Lord. the Lord, for his mercies are great. And let me not fall into the hand of man. Are y'all hearing me? Let's go back to Matthew. and Let's look at this again. <clears throat> judge not that you be not judged. This word judge here is an interesting word. It, did, it does not mean we can't go to court. It doesn't mean that we can't come to a rational conclusion about two opinions that need to be vetted out. It doesn't mean that we can't look at the behavior of a person and determine whether or not they're all right with God or not. We'll know them by the fruit that they bear. Right? Are y'all with me? So we have, to, we have to examine this thing from the context of what Jesus is saying. He's talking to his disciples. There's going to be, some, there's going to be a time some things are going to pop up in your life, and you've got to know how to deal with it. 
So the first thing I want you to get rid of is harsh criticism. Amen. Wow. Say harsh, harsh. Criticism. criticism. Harsh criticism leads us to condemn the ones we are criticizing. Amen. With no mercy. David said, don't let me fall into the hands of men. <laughs> they have no mercy. You deal with me, God. You deal with me. And so what is God saying to the disciples? I want you to deal with them like I would. Amen. I want you to show the mercy that I'm, that I'm going to show. Are you with me? I want that harsh criticism removed from your lips. Amen. Condemn nobody. Condemn nobody. Jesus the Bible said in St. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Okay, praise God. He came into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You with me? So we hear a lot of stuff, you know. I, I, I watch uh, some things sometimes online on Facebook to see what people are doing, and, and occasionally somebody will send something to me and say, look at this, this is interesting, this is interesting. The other day we was looking at something, and it was, it was in reference to a, a very famous female artist, a singer. And, uh, and she did some, some, some pretty dumb things, the way she was praying, and her lifestyle, praise God. And, uh, and there was some real harsh criticism about her behavior. Are you with me? And the commentators were concerned. They got so concerned about the harsh criticism, they didn't see the wrong in what she was doing. Are you with me? So the moral of that story is the devil will take us and harshly criticize wrong behavior, so much so the wrong will be accepted as right. That's the problem with condemnation. Are you with me? So what do you do when there's guilt and when there's wrong? You pray. And you ask God for an audience. You can't correct people that you don't know. You have no relationship with them. Why would they listen to you? Are you with me? Iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of a man and his friends. In order for a blade to get sharp, your knife to get sharp, it's got to get close to the sharpener. You can't look at your blade and curse the dullness. Sharpen it. Put it near the thing that can bring, put an edge on it. Quit criticizing people that you have no desire to get in relationship with. Stop it. He says, stop that. Quit condemning people. Isn't that an easy thing to do? Yeah. Look at them. I don't know why they're doing that. I didn't know that. that. Get him, God. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Jesus said, stop. That's not what we do in the kingdom. Amen. I knew the world was jacked up when I got here. I don't need nobody to tell me that. What I need y'all to do is help me straighten it out. Thank you. Two claps, two claps. Help me straighten it out. Now, that don't mean we put up with foolishness and, and silly and it's just crazy stuff. People believe that, well, you know, they're Christians. We can just do anything. No, uh-uh. No, 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 no. You misunderstood my kindness to be stupidity. Are y'all with me? And I ain't got but 46 seconds to really do, deal with that. So that's a cliffhanger. Let's come back Sunday morning and find out what to do with the people that think you are a fool. <laughs> come on, give God some praise. Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Disciples aren't fools. Amen. We're not weak. We're not stupid. We're not ignorant. Amen. Amen. Amen? We just won't condemn you. We won't harshly criticize you. But that don't mean we got a welcome mat on our back where you can clean your feet on it. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. I said Sunday, didn't I? Okay, I'm sorry. Let's take a moment and worship God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I'm sorry. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. As I come into your presence. Hallelujah. Past the gates of praise. Into your sanctuary. Where we're standing. him that way. The Old Testament saints couldn't because they didn't have any faith mixed with their works. We can rest, disciples, we can rest. The God who called us into service will take care of every one of our needs. There is no temptation taken you but such as common to man, but God is faithful. God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able we will also make a way of escape to a landing place that you may be capable, strong, to bear the heat of that thing. God, you're faithful. You are faithful. We love you, Lord. We trust you in the name of Jesus. Lady Fran's going to come and pray right now to seal the deal of this worship and this word so we can walk out here in complete victory. Somebody shout complete victory. Complete victory. Shout complete victory. Complete victory. Thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you for your word on tonight. We declare that that word has penetrated our souls. And God, we ask that this week, as we may have object lessons, that we'll remember this word. The Holy Spirit will bring it back to our remembrance and will remind us that we do believe in God. We believe that the work is already done so we can walk in rest and peace. We can be in peace, Lord God, knowing that the work is already done. And if you've already done it from the beginning of time, then whatever we're asking you for right now is already done. And we can rest in that faith. We can rest in that with assurance, not Father God getting in fear because the enemy's trying to make us fear that it's not happening, but it's already done. So we thank you, we pray 
praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're watching us tonight by way of television, smartphone, tablet, desktop, however you might be doing this, are you in the rest of God? Are you in faith? Are you standing on the authority of the Word of God? Do you know how? Are you a disciple? Would you like to be? What do I do? How do I get there? Say this after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me. Receive me. You said, if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in my heart, you raised him from the dead, I could be saved. Thank you for forgiving me, receiving me, causing me, and calling me your child. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. If you did that, welcome to the family. Praise God. Jesus is Lord. We want to know how we can be of assistance to you wherever you're viewing this from. You can contact us directly, if you like, by phone, 810-732-5880, or by way of the World Wide Web. Praise God. ITK2.com. That's ITK2.com. That's inside the kingdom. ITK2, inside the kingdom.com. Praise God. Let us know. We want to help you. If you're there on Facebook or, or YouTube and you're viewing with us, indicate it there. Let us know how we can bring you some assistance and relief. If you did do that and you confess that Jesus is your Lord, we want to get you a spiritual birth certificate. Praise God. So you remember that this day can be commemorated. This was the day that, you, that God turned your life around. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Now, before the ushers bring the offering envelopes, let me say this to you. I think we bring them out too quick sometimes. Uh, we've already filled them out when Minister Miles starts talking to us, and we've already decided. We didn't hear anything. Praise God. Hallelujah. So before you get them, just, uh, I need you to look up here for a minute. Let me, let me talk to you. Every disciple, every disciple was taught to tithe. Amen. Every Amen. disciple. Yes. And the tithe is not what you said it is. It's what he said it is. Amen. Over in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, in Leviticus, in Numbers, Deuteronomy, when he issued the mandate to tithe as a law, it was already written in eternity before it became a law. Long before Moses went to the mountain and got the commandment on tithe, Abraham was doing it. Amen. So why did he do it? Why did he do it? In the garden, it was done. Are you with me? Why, what prompted those individuals to respond to something that wasn't legal? Covenant. Somebody say covenant. And divine protection. So he said, if you bring the tithe into the storehouse, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. I will do it. You don't have to. Enter into the rest of tithing and leave the rest to me. Did you get that? Enter into the rest of believing of tithing and leave the rest of that stuff to me, I'll handle it. I'll deal with it. You don't have to. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Are you with me? Don't do it and work it out yourself. And get back with me and tell me how that's working. Prove me, he said. Get back with me. Tell me how it's working. Can you take better care of you than me? No. You're not your own. You've been bought with a price. You're mine. I'll take care of you, but you got to trust me. Amen. Amen? Amen? Then there are several other things that he says that we can do. That tithing won't bring you an increase back. You can't give God what he, what he is and call it a seed now. Come on. If I borrow some money from you and I pay it back to you and I tell you this is a gift, <laughs> how are you going to look at me? Pastor, I lost his mind. It took him longer to pay me back than he said, and he brought it back to me and said, here, here's a gift. Do y'all think God is dumber than we are? <laughs> no, no. He won't condemn you. He still loves you. But don't insult him. Just don't do it. Don't lie to him. Just don't do it. And deal with the consequences. Amen? He said, a liar won't tarry in his sight. Amen? I pray that your faith is risen. Those of you that are watching, that are at home, I pray that your faith is risen. Amen. That you're going to trust God yes. and you're going to obey him. Yes. Forget about me. Yes. 
This ain't about me. That's right. Hallelujah. Who am I? Right. A man just like you. Praise God. A human being. Homo sapien. Praise God. I, I have no hell to send you to or heaven to, to reward you with. Amen. I'm a servant just like you. Amen. And what I'm doing, what I'm telling you, I'm doing. Praise God. Amen. We trust God. Yeah. It ain't about us. Amen. It's about God and you and the relationship he made with you. It's called a covenant. Bring you all the tithe into the storehouse. And then we do give. But I plant more seeds than I do give. Amen. Are you with me? I'm, I'm, I'm very serious about that. I plant more seeds than I give. Now, I do give, but I, uh, gifts, I mean, give, gifts. G-I-F-T-S, gifts. I don't try to gift God that much because what do you give somebody that's got everything? Praise God. You, you, you bless God. Hallelujah. So I sow. I plant seeds. And I see the harvest come back. And it gives Amen. me the ability to give to men, Amen. to help people and support them. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Several different ways you can do that now. Hallelujah. <clears throat> if you're here in the building, we're going to receive an envelope, a sovelope, and you're going to fill that out. If you're in our area and you do have sovelopes and you want to contribute that way, on the north wall of the building, there's a door with a receptacle. Bring it. Plant your seed and say on that envelope what it is you're believing for. Our finance ministry is anointed, highly anointed. They pray over these sovelopes and believe God for your increase and your harvest. Amen? We looked, at, we looked at the scripture tonight. God wants to increase us. Amen? Hallelujah. As long as we can rest and believe it and trust him, it's ours. Say it's mine. Hallelujah. So how do I do that uh, tonight if you want to... Uh, on itk2.com uh, there's a donate button there click it and follow the instructions it's real simple if you want to join with us in electronic giving uh, the way that we do that here of course there's paypal on on uh, on the worldwide web page itk2.com so you can do it through paypal but if you want to do it through, through the way we have here givelify can they can they do paypal to us not on the uh, on our web page you can it's complicated we won't keep it simple Keep it simple. I don't like complicated. When I get complicated, I get confused. I do. I get confused. You want to, get, you want to confuse me? Make it complicated. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, PayPal, itk2.com. Givelify is the other way we do. And that, you can get that from the Apple Store or the Google Play Store. Go there and download that app. Put our address in, 2430 Dutcher Road, Kingdom of Heaven Ministries. We're the one with the sword and the swords and the shield. There's a couple of other kingdom of heavens there, but we are the, I don't, I don't know if we're the original, we were one of the first. Yeah. Praise God. We're not mad that somebody is doing that. Uh, after all, it's not our trademark, it's, it's heavens. Yeah. And so we, we were smart enough to call our church that. Praise God. And so, hallelujah, God has honored us for that level of obedience. And so when you get that and you download it, Praise God. Fill out that envelope. It's just like if you were sitting here and you were writing something out, you're just using your fingers, click on there and watch it happen. Amen? And then finally, finally, there's a, a direct access to the office I stand in and the grace that is on this office. Praise God. And, and you can, you can uh, access that if you don't have Cash App. Go back to the Apple Store, the Google Play Store, and download Cash App. Count, fill it out. The address for Ezekiel 4430, the blessing, the rest in your house, is dollar sign LWB 66. Dollar sign LWB 66. And watch God do the rest. So I'm asking you, I'm asking you before we do anything, before you click, snap, or send, let's pray. God, we thank you tonight. We've heard a word that challenged us, charged us, and even changed some of us. Now we're going to sow into that word. We already know what the, the amount of the tithe is. But what about an offering, Father? What do I sow tonight that will say to you how much I appreciate this word being released to me? I love you, sir, and I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now the ushers are coming, praise God, with some sovelopes to assist you in your sowing tonight. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Were you blessed tonight, really? Did this truth help you? Yeah. Praise God. Is this walk through the, 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 through the gospels, through the school of Jesus' discipleship, kind of what the order, what, what the spirit ordered? Yes, sir. Yeah. 
Now remember, they didn't know that they were being trained to be disciples. I gave you the end result of the school. The disciples didn't have that. They connected with Jesus and found out later on they had to be disciples. Amen? Become fishers of men. And everything that he did prepared them for that. And so what we're doing is preparing you for graduation. Amen? At some point in the midterms, you're going to pass. Now remember this. This year, each one reaches one. Amen. Say this year, each one reaches one. So that means that you got to get somebody that you're going to disciple. Amen? Now some of us have two or three people that we're already disciple, And that's wonderful. But everybody ought to have somebody. Everybody ought to have somebody. Let's don't get so busy in this earth, in society, in our jobs, and the things that we're doing that we forget that that soul might not know God and will leave the planet headed to hell on our watch. Amen? Each one, reach one. Say, Father, help me be the disciple this year that you desire me to be. I am a recipient of the charge. I am the one that will reach one. Each one reach one. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you're ready to give and you've completed that, you can rise and we'll get some instruction on how to come and bring our seed, our tithe, and our offering to the altar. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you, Jesus. Name. The ability to put these seeds this tithe at your feet. We expect what you said to be true is true. We rest with Let's rise in his presence. Forgive me for that pause. I had to make my offering. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. There will be soup for you to take home tonight right after service as a part of the fundraiser that is being, that is going on until we tell you it's over. <laughs> Praise God. We reach our goal, right? Hallelujah. So, so please take advantage of the soup that's for sale tonight. Amen. I can smell it. Can you smell it? Alexa's made it. What kind of soup is it? White chicken chili. Bro, Sam said it sounds homemade. White chicken chili. White chicken chili. 
I was just thinking, this is uh, Black History Month. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, just <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, this, I need to go up here. Yeah. Okay, come on, let's bring it up. Bring it up, bring it up. We can really go home. Say this with me. Father God, I thank you for being faithful and giving us seeds to sow, bread for our table, multiplying our seed sown, and increasing the fruit of our righteousness. Thank you for giving us the grace we need to have all sufficiency on all sides so that we can abound to every good work. We are sores in the house of God, and because we are, we thank you for commanding men to give back to us good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over with the same measure we meet is measured back to us again. Thank you also for extending your covenant of the tithe to us. You have opened the windows of heaven, poured out a blessing. There's not room enough to receive it all, personally rebuked to devour for our sake, and caused our fields to be fruitful in their time. And as we give to pastor, according to Ezekiel 44:30, a blessing rests in our house, and you daily load us with benefit so we can start the process over again. Amen. There is a first-time guest back there. Is that a first-time guest with you, Justice, back there? Yeah? It's, you're kind of in the dark for me, so I... I don't want to misrepresent you. Is that Amarion? Amarion? Ah, oh, let's say amen for our first time guest. Hallelujah. He's a guest of justice, right? So, so let's, uh, let's, let's greet him uh, before he leaves. Give him a good shake and somebody buy him a cup of soup. <laughs> All right. Each one. Oh, okay. The spirit of the Lord is upon us. Because he hath anointed us to preach the gospel to the poor, he hath sent us to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Each one, reach one. God bless you. We'll see you Friday. Hallelujah.